Welcome and thanks for joining me in this episode. I'm going to assemble the balance bridge with the regulating system, uh, the jewel and the balance wheel. Fingers crossed everything goes smoothly. So in the last episode I left off, I had just finished the machining parts of my new balance bridge and I tested the friction of the stud carrier on the balance bridge and it was really good. That was a major hurdle for me. Now I'm just going to test how much friction there is for the dual shock setting because this is going to be a press fit in. So I'm going to have to assemble some of the components before the dual shock gets pressed in on top. So I've got my trusty phone set up to record that at the same time. Um, this all happens. And, uh, the whole, uh, so l let me just show that again on a, on a different angle. This is meant to be a really tight fit and have to be pressed in. And it's just, and the, the drill shock setting just dropped in the hole. Oh, I, I tested the Harima out on a test piece and it fit really good. And now when I did it on my work piece, my balance bridge, it turned out like really big, like it's a massive hole compared to the DualShock setting, it's an undersized reamer. Mm. That hurts, that, uh, that really hurts. I'm sorry guys, I guess it's another Balance Bridge video. I've been having a think about it and I think what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to try to find out what exactly happened. Um, so I'm going to consult Google. Basically I scrolled through a bunch of threads on the Practical Machinist forum and also I found the Sandvik Tools website had like a troubleshooting page on reaming and what I did is I just went through all that information and found the common causes or suggestions that people um, were posting and that sort of cross reference with the Sandvik Tools website and I just put them in a list which is this list right here. And so the first one on the list, pretty straightforward, is spindle run out. I mean, my lathe has some pretty good run out. I don't think that that is an issue, but that was one of the most common ones that sort of popped up on all the, on all the suggestions. The, the next one was the reamer was not aligning with the pre-drilled hole. Now I can see this one may uh, be an issue for me because what I did was I drilled the hole and then I bored it open with the lathe cutter. And so maybe um, the tailstock to is, is slightly out. I mean, if it's five micron out, if I include the run out of the spindle and say a five micron misalignment of the tailstock to the headstock, that's probably enough to, to be getting the results that I'm getting. So that's something that I'm going to definitely look into. One interesting thing was spindle speed and feed. So someone mentioned that if the spindle's spinning too fast and you ream quite slow, this can also cause an oversized hole. And that's exactly what I did. So I'm really hoping that that's 
the cause. So that's a simple um, solution. The next one was the hole had a built up edge and um, maybe to chamfer the edge of the hole. So I'm going to try that one. And also another one I think which is important, which I think is sort of goes hand in hand with the point number two of the misaligned hole was um, not to choke the reamer and grab it. So it's uh, very, um, not to choke the reamer and allow some uh, flexibility to sort of uh, waver and find, find the hole. Um, that might also be a fix. So tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some test pieces, recreate um, the oversized hole, just do exactly what I did um, for my balance bridge and then go through some of the solutions that are here and try to really, um, and then try to nut out exactly what the cause was. So that will help me so much, not only for the balance bridge, but in the future for reaming other holes as well. That's something I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Let me know what you think. I, I want your opinion, guys. Let me know what you think um, is the issue and, and what you guys do when you're reaming holes. I'd like to know. And if there's something that I miss, I can add it on then and go through those motions and, and figure things out. Just thinking about what I said at the end of the last video, I did ream that hole out with a precision ream and I tested it before. So it should be okay. Um, hopefully that's not my downfall. So the watchmaking lesson here is never assume anything.